All right, Chet. I mean, I know all about you, <laughs> but you know, I just want to ask you a few questions for some of the people that might not know all about you at this point, even though most of them should. The insiders know, but maybe the ones that are listening not. Chet Nichols. Who is Chet Nichols? The people ask me, I said, Chet Nichols is, I call it the one who can turn people from a, from a good bodybuilder into a Mr. Olympia. Okay. I, when people ask me how, I said, I don't know what it is, but he has a way to make it happen. Okay. So I want to talk to you about how, when, when did you start coaching? And, and, and I know, I know, but you know, for just for the people to understand, when did you start? How long ago? And what was the reason for you to say, okay, I'm going to do this with, with other athletes? It really kind of started, obviously, when, you know, me and Kim kind of got into this together, we kind of started working out. It became very obvious, very quick that Kim had way more genetics than I had. She was going to go way farther than I did. But we didn't know the whole ins and outs, really, of what we needed to to get there. And so while we were headed that direction, I dug into the nutritional part of the stuff um, as far as I could possibly go. And that's that's really where it became, you know, the that part. We needed that knowledge. We knew we needed that knowledge to get Kim to that next level. But where did um, where did you get all the information from? Though? Did you start reading about it, or you, had, you had into everything? I mean, so I went um, into in the game plan. I was a cop at the time, and so my you know at the time it just kind of played into things really well. Is that I was basically going to school to run the wellness program. Um, in, in on my police department so that was kind of the game plan and mm -hmm. then bodybuilding kind of took off and so i was already getting the kind of basic you know basic knowledge that i needed um as far as that type of education but we all know that book education plays into bodybuilding but not completely obviously if it did then everybody would be you know at a certain level because you just read and apply um, so I started digging deeper into a lot of like, I, and I had access, I had a couple of really good friends who were doctors who gave me access to these libraries, these journals, they were private for doctors to kind of research. Um, and so I kind of dug in deep into those and just started kind of looking at shit and finding out things myself and started kind of seeing how that that could apply based off of how the body, you know, worked. Um, and that's really when it comes to bodybuilding, you've got to figure out a way of bodybuilding science, I guess you would call it and real science and where they meet in the middle and how they apply to each individual. Um, and that was really kind of where everything took off. And then from there, you know, basically the whole, you know, dream of, you know, doing the working for the police department and running their wellness plan um, kind of changed. And, you know, I saw this op, everybody kind of traveled together. And I mean, you know, you know how that goes. Yeah. Am I still on? Yes, you're still here. Yeah. Yeah. You were, oh, you were, you froze for a second. Yeah, yeah. Like my thing said, unstable for a minute. Uh -huh. I'm always stable, but um, <laughs> so, so uh, but basically what ended up happening was I saw this like opportunity, you know, from talking to people and, and stuff. I saw like, man, they, you know, there a lot of them have a pretty in-depth knowledge of what they're doing, but it's not like to a T. I could see little mistakes that they were making. And so I, I saw this opportunity that I felt was really good because there wasn't really anybody doing it wasn't anybody like really coaching pro athletes or pro bodybuilders at that time. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I even remember going in, you know, the first time to, to talking to my lieutenant, I go, man, I think I'm going to take a year's leave of absence, looking at possibly becoming like a professional trainer to like pro athletes. And, then, and he's like, man, that sounds, that sounds really cool. That sounds like a really good deal. That pay a lot of money. I go, I don't, I don't even think it pays anything right now. <laughs> He's like, oh, 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 that doesn't sound so good then. I go, but I think it could. I, mean, I think there's the opportunity is there to make some money at this. And I think that it's something that could, you know, turn out in the long run to be a, a good opportunity. So, so you worked, so you basically your first athlete was your wife, Kim. 100%. You know, 100%. and she ended up dethroning Linda Murray. Linda Murray, exactly. How did you get from Kim all of a sudden to having basically the top 10 guys almost right. at the Olympia? How did that work? So how, how that happened, and it was pretty simple. Again, all of us are together. Kim's conditioning was spot on every time. Like she showed up in shape every single show, didn't matter what the case was. And at the time, we pushed the women's conditioning to kind of a new level. So mm -hmm. she took that conditioning and kind of pushed it to that next level. So people like Nasser, uh, Flex Wheeler, 
Paul Dillette, um, which those were three of like the first group that kind of came on board. It was just kind of like we already knew each other. And they were like, you know, each one of them was like, listen, man, I didn't realize you were helping people because me and Nasser kind of worked out a deal. And that was 97. And a lot of people felt like he pushed Nasser. But I mean, uh, Nasser pushed Dorian about as far as he could possibly be pushed that year. You know, but argu and, arguably some people had him winning. Yeah, 100 percent, 100 percent. And so, you know, and then Dillett that year was also very good. And uh, so then, you know, Flex came on he, and he was kind of the one that said, hey, listen, I didn't know you were helping people. Man, I would like for you to get, you know, help me for the uh, Arnold. He didn't compete that year. Um, what, year so, what year What year? are we talking? That was 97. So you got him ready for 97 or for 98? I got, so I got Nasser Paul, 97. Flex is at the Olympia. So then Flex is like, listen, I didn't realize you were helping people. Da, 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 da. I would like for you to get me ready for 98. Arnold. Then, of course, that was one of his best showings, you know, Arnold. Right, and right. From there, from there, it just snowballed, obviously. So everybody stopped coming. So back then, it was, the, yeah, you were, you were the man. Everybody, yeah, the Chet Nichols, you know, if you could get in with Chet, you can get in with Chet. And, and this is probably <laughs> the time where you where, where it was the hardest to get a hold right. of you. Yeah, 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 for sure. For sure. But, uh, it was a different time, too. I mean, you got to realize, like, you know, during those, you know, eras, uh, like, I mean, everything is unique right now because mm -hmm. we're used to stuff now. Like we want information now. We want, you know, pictures now. Like, you know, when you, a coach now is totally different from back then because everything had to be strategically planned perfect. You would take pictures. They would go out at the same time. I would get them at the same time. So it's a, you know, best case scenario, 24 hour, you know, system. Right. And, and, and so, I mean, everything had to be precise, but it was a unique time too. Um, it was a time that I, you know, think, you know, I mean, obviously it's easier now. Um, but back then, I think everything was so strategic and it was just a unique, you know, uh, time. And, and I mean, at the, you know, I was younger, obviously able to do a lot more at the time as far as go, go, go. Yeah. But I mean, there was a point where I had 12 athletes in the Olympia. I was just about to ask you, what was the most athletes you had in one Olympia? 12. Well, I mean, that was a year that Vince Taylor came back and competed and looked, looked like I had Vince in that show. At 45. Yes, and he looked phenomenal. Phenomenal. He got kind of gypped a little bit for being a little, little too vocal that year. <laughs> but uh, um, I remember that because I was in the same stage. Yeah. yeah, I think I think what year was it? I don't remember. I'm trying to think. It was probably yeah. 99. Maybe? No, 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 no. It had to be later. He came back. He came back. Remember, he I think he qualified. Well, that's right, that's right. I think he okay. qualified in Australia. We qualified from the Olympia. I think Masters Olympia, and yeah. then that qualified. I think no, 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 no. The Masters but Olympia it, doesn't qualify you for the Olympia. I'm, I well, think they did. Remember, one year they did. They they qualified them. So if you won the Masters Olympia, you got to do the Olympia. I know Don Youngblood did it, um, that way. but I don't know if I don't know if Vince did it that way. Let me see. I Maybe. if I'm not mistaken, but I'm going to look right now. <laughs> I don't remember either. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, he did the Olympia this one year when he was 45 years old. I don't even know. How old is he today? In his, somewhere, somewhere in his 60s. High 50s, probably. Huh? Well, I don't know. I just, I've had him on Instagram, and I know it says 50. It's like Vince 50, but he's been on Instagram for a while, so <laughs> I don't Vince know. Vince Taylor's, uh, when was his last Olympic? I, I, I could swear I was on stage with him. It was probably 2001, maybe. Yeah, then I would have been on stage with him, exactly. That's what I'm thinking now, now thinking back. Yeah, Warner. and I think he qualified, if I'm not mistaken, in Australia at Tony Doherty's yeah. show. Because back think, then it was still the top three. Top three, yeah. 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 So, so 12 guys. So you, you had to be running from room to room 24 hours. I literally never slept that day. I mean, the, the weekend. Like, yeah. I literally just room to room to room to room to room. Um, Cause I know pe people don't understand, as a coach, especially was, you, was, how I many mean, how many times you see one person. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, and I mean, I was just like go 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 back then, and I mean, I went. I mean, I probably got there on Sunday before, and I mean, it was like that the whole week. Yeah. It wasn't like I mean, a lot of the guys didn't get in until maybe Wednesday. You know, some of the key guys came in early, but I mean, it was like crazy. You know, I mean, how, really, how hard is it? How hard is it to to stay not unbiased when you have it doesn't matter twelve or six 
the top six guys, everybody thinks he's going to win. Yeah. Everybody wants the best from the coach. Everybody wants the coach to believe I'm going to win. How hard is it to stay somewhat for never, neutral? It was never, yeah, for me, never. It was never that hard. You know what I mean? Uh, But in your mind, in your mind. I, now you don't have you don't have to say you don't have to see who yeah, in your no, mind. No, but I mean, there was points where you know Ronnie was so dominant, and I remember looking at other guys and thinking like, "Fuck, it looks so good." And then I walk into Ronnie's room and be like, "No, <laughs> you just by themselves they look good. Ronnie just a different level." That's what like, I was. That's what I was saying. You you had to think yeah, like, "Damn, yeah, this is not yeah. even close." There was points like that for sure. But I was never, you know, like my game, you know, plan was always like get him in the very best shape ever. Right. I mean, even the year that Gunther, you know, beat Ronnie. I mean, like I had Gunther in, you know, in that and. Um, you know, going in, I, I knew like this is gonna be close. This what be close. really? What did that feel like, though? It was, you know, it was, it was good and bad because, you know, I mean, Ronnie was looked at as the guy that was unbeatable, and like here we are, like I'm taking another guy and beating him. But at the same time, you know, I felt like Ronnie almost needed it. Like he almost, like we had gotten to a point where both of us needed to kind of regroup. And that was 2002. And then without that, we'd have never seen 2003. Yeah, 2003 yeah. took it to another yeah. level. Oh, that was the game changer. So he, yeah. so Ronnie was pissed, wasn't he? He was pissed, pissed. Yeah. And I mean, but he was motivated. And yeah. I remember him, you know, thinking like, listen, if they, oh, they're trying to take this shit from me. If they want to take this from me, they're gonna have to come and get it. They're gonna have to come and get it. They created a monster. Like that's literally <laughs> they created a monster. And like it was nonstop. And normally we would take this long break, and. uh He was like, "Listen, man, we're gonna take about a month break, and we're gonna go right back to work." Like, yeah, right back. yeah, it was. Yeah, that was crazy. So, how, you were working with Ronnie before, before the Olympia. How? How? When did you start working with Ronnie? So I started with Ronnie the in '98. So I trained flex um, for the Arnold, and then in '98 for the Night of Champions. Night of the Champions. Yeah. So it was it was a little bit earlier than that, but so but that was your first show with Ronnie, Night of Champions. Uh, Yes, not a champ. When he came out and and just let everybody know this is what's happening right now. Yep. Wow. That was a very point. You then, you literally have a way of bringing the best out of people. People always ask how I got here. I was willing to work just a little harder than everyone else every damn day. If I can have hundreds of hours back, you know I'm going to grab them. Spending hours prepping chicken, rice, and vegetables, F that. I rely on perfect nutrition. I rely on trifecta. And I'm saying this because you did the same with me. No, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And I think, you know, my thing is, like, I never try to adapt the athlete to me. I don't know if that makes sense. I always try to adapt to the athlete mm. because everybody is so different. You know what I mean? Um, I don't have one way of, you know, I, I have specific ways that I like to do things definitely, but I mean, you know, I'm not against like certain training styles and certain diet styles and whatever I think like this athlete will, will use, you know I mean? I've had, like, I, I think that, I mean, I've had guys that were like super watery and we had to do like different way, way different diets than, you know, we would have had to done with, you know, somebody who stays lean all year round. You know what I mean? Like, right. I mean, I, I never like, tried to you know adapt the person to my style like this is the way it's got to be done i think that's one of the things that's allowed me to kind of you know stay stay in the game for a while mm. so when you when you what do you look for when now not not just pros but amateurs too what do you look for in an athlete they, if they when they contact you and say lay i would like you to be my coach what do you look for do you ask them for pictures do you ask for information how do you make the decision that's okay i'll give it a shot Obviously, I mean, you know, pictures play into you know, play into it, but at, at the same time, like, you know, I'm not looking for, you know, a Mr. Olympia every single time. Like, I'm looking for a guy. Usually, I can tell pretty quick right off, like, a couple communications. Like, if the messages are super short, if they're just like, how much do you charge, this and that, everything's very basic. I realize this is going to be like somebody that's not going to communicate well. This is going to be somebody that's not like on point with everything. But if I get a message from somebody and they literally like take the time and write out, you know, 15 paragraphs of just the, the most like little things and stuff, that's the guy instantly that I'm like, okay, 
Oh, this okay. guy is actually serious. You know what I mean? Like this guy took the time to write out like what he is looking for, what his goals are, what he has done, you know, like he's taking the time to give me the information that I need. And then, you know, but I mean, there's always times when I think somebody's going to do something and they don't, you know, as, as good as I do, like communication is key. And, you know, you can't like drag communication out of people. Like it's just impossible. And I mean, I know there's a lot of clients that are like, well, communication wasn't great with this guy. And so I'm, I want to change coaches and stuff. And I get that. Some guys aren't like that. Um, but at the end of the day, most of that, because I'll have, I'll have people contact me and be like, yeah, I've been with like four coaches already. And, you know, I just can't really find my thing. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> I'm like, that's, okay. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, a, that's a red flag right there. Yeah, where this shit's headed. And, you know, some guys just aren't good at communicating and, and like, but those guys that are just, you know, initiate, you know, contact all the time every week. Hey man, I just want to let you know it's a great week. This net, da, 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 or give you feedback. Hey, yes. Yeah. My sleeping was way off this week. I don't know. Just something weird. My stomach's felt this way. Da, 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 da. Th those are gold mining guys. Like I, I don't care if that's at the novice level mm -hmm. or at the pro level. Like those are the guys that you realize that you can help. Like you yeah. can actually help. Um, and, but the guys that just take the information and then you don't hear from them from a month. And then, you know, those guys are just, you know, hard to help. But it, yeah, but it, it, it happens a lot to people, you know, yeah. and, and, yeah. and it, this is what I do. I tell people, make sure you in off season, send me pictures for weeks, yes. you know, and if they don't send the pictures, what do you want me to do? Yeah. And then like, you know, I mean, there's a lot of times where you're trying to drag information out of people, mm. you know what I mean? And, um, it, it's like, listen, I can only like manipulate stuff based off of what I like. I'm not a fucking magician. Right. Like, you know what I mean? I, I don't know what you look like, what you're thinking, what, how your body's responding. Um, I need like stuff like that. And I, I think guys, especially, um, they get into this, you know, mindset of like, I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to bust ass and I'm going to train hard and I'm fucking training hard. So what else is there to do? You know, this and that, just tell me what to do. Right. You know, and I'm like, listen, I can tell you what to do. <laughs> But I got to know what's happening. You know what I mean? Like, that's right. just the way I've always been. I want to know. And I and I tell everybody right off the bat, like, I don't care how small it is. Like, man, like, you have trouble going to the bathroom for two days. I want to know. Like, <laughs> I want to yeah. know that there's a problem. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't care what it is. And that, those are the guys that I look for, you know, as far as, like, helping people, you know. So, so, yeah. So, going back to the Olympia with these guys. So, you had the top guys for, uh, for a long time. When you basically running almost everybody on the Olympia stage that was placing was on the chat. And then there was a time all of a sudden where chat slowed down and all of a sudden chat not disappeared, but was gone from working with the top guys. Because most of the guys that you work with, they were gone, retired. And then there was there was a, a phase where it was quiet around chat. What happened? Did you get tired? Did you? Think about no, retiring I, I from. I did get burnt out a little bit, you know. I mean, because it was just go, 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 yeah. go. And then, you know, after Ronnie, it's kind of like, shit. What do you do? Yeah. Like, where do you go from here? How yeah. do you? How do you? You know, how do you top that? You know, and I mean, so that you know, that's kind of one thing. Um, it was interesting too, though, because there was all these classes coming, you know, onto the scene that that we hadn't seen before, which I thought was great. And I, and I promote shows, and I can always continue to promote shows, right? So what, but what really happened was, so along that time, um, 2003, we ended up having uh, a kid, our first uh, son. And so we have Dominic, and then three years later, we have Morgan. And it was during that time that I was like, listen, do I want to be gone all the time? Do I want to miss, like, all of this shit? Or do I want to kind of back off and, uh, you know, make sure that I don't miss any other thing? Like, I don't want to be looking 15 years from now being like, yeah, I missed birthdays and yeah. this and miss that and all this kind of stuff. So I shut way down. We focused more on um, the, you know, like the, the shows and the promotions and stuff, which at the time was a really good, like the shows were really big at that time. So it was, a, you know, it was easy to, you know, we had six shows at the time. And so it was easy to focus mainly on the promotional side of things, uh, back off, you know, and, and just be with the kids. So what and made older <laughs> yeah what made you yeah. do, what made you decide to uh i don't even know how after how many years to say all right let yeah. me let me go do this again i'm ready. So back so the, the kids got older and of course they've been around bodybuilding their entire life um they both started basically weight training 
because of sports. Um, and so they really kind of drove me even back into wanting to train a little bit harder, a little bit more, and then everything progressed. And, you know, they started like seeing the shows and then I got a little bit more, you know, interested and then kind of like, like the hunger was there. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I kind of started back, just kind of gradually started back and, um, until the point where I was kind of like hungry and like wanted to prove a point, you know, and, and then it just kind of, you know, took off again. So a after you came back, who was the first athlete that you worked with again as a pro? Man, I don't, I mean, um, maybe Pakulski. Um, that was, that was know. after you returned? I think so. I thought, yeah, I mean, that I thought, was, I thought that, that might have been that might have been in the middle somewhere a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I think Ben was like was, the Arnold, he competed in the yeah. Arnold, where he yeah. placed like second or third. Yeah. Yes. That was, I mean, that was me kind of dabbling in it a yeah. little bit. You know what I mean? Um, you know, I mean, I had several guys. I had a guy from Bulgaria, uh, Dobermir. Um, I had, you know, of course, Kevin Jordan that I've, you know, trained, you know, for quite a while. Um, I'm trying to think who was the first big name guy, though. Right off the bat, I mean, it, I mean, there was quite a few. Yeah. I can't. How's that. how is Kevin doing? Kevin's doing good. I mean, he's starting to realize, like, man, my time's like starting to come. <laughs> you know, so I need. How to how 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 old is Kevin? I don't even know how old he is. He's cranking in the high thirties right now. Okay. So, you know what I mean? So, um, he's a guy that I mean, I've always said Kevin could have been whatever he wanted to be. Like, he could have been that good. Um, but he likes to go out and have fun and, and do his things and stuff. But he's starting to gradually, you know, realize like, hey, man, yeah. I, I'm only going to be able to do this for so long. And so he's wanting to step on, you know, things a little bit, get a little bit more serious and stuff. But, you know, it is what it is. Like, a, a little bit more serious doesn't sound too convincing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I yeah. saw him. I saw him compete in, uh, was it Texas? I think in Texas Pro he competed. Last day, now in August, last last August. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I told him, I said, man, what happened, man? What what, what are you doing? You know, because I, 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 you know, it was it was disappointing yeah, for him. Yeah. yeah. And he he was straightforward. He said, hey, man, I just partied too much, man. <laughs> it's like That's the thing. He likes to go out and have fun, and yeah. I get that. Stuff. But he, like, I keep telling him, I'm like, dude, you just don't realize how good you could be. Yeah. Like, you have everything. You have all the tools. Like most people would die to have your genetics, those fucking clavicles that are so fucking wide and uh, you know, everything. That, he has it all. True. He has it all. all. Genetic as hell, dude. Got strength, got power, like, you know, structure, tiny ways, can get in shape. Um, you know, he's got everything. It's just basically being consistent and just grinding. You know what I mean? And that's the thing right now. Like we, we went away from that for a while. If you notice, like we went away from that we saw conditioning that was really mediocre. Um, you know, the guys didn't, they weren't like that consistent group. And I know every era is going to say like, I, I train harder than anybody, but yeah, I'm yeah. telling you, like they didn't when it was like important, like the times when it needed to be, they were getting it done, but not to the extent that we're seeing now. Now we're seeing a lot of young guys that live this lifestyle that are basically never miss a meal everything is timed perfect they're in the gym every day they're hitting it 100 every day mm -hmm. like we're seeing that now we're right. seeing some young guns come up that are basically setting the tone for the next several years so so what would you think what would you say the re what was the reason for in the last let's say i don't know how many years that the condition wasn't really Social, up to I'm 100% sold on social media because it was all brand new and social media became the stage. And so you've seen this whole new group of guys come in and we're seeing it now, but they're figuring out how to manage it a little mm -hmm. bit better now, use it to their advantage. Um, but when it was new, shit, like all they had to do is throw up some pictures here and there. And some of these guys were making a little money on social media and on YouTube but it basically just made them into something different. You know, they, they weren't like those guys like Dorian that just disappeared and went into, you know, a dungeon and fucking came out a monster. Mm -hmm. You know, those guys were all different, you know, so, and that's what I think we went away from. Now we're, we're finding those guys that don't have a problem, you know, day in and day out, like just living that like reclusive bodybuilding lifestyle. Yeah. True. Yeah, I feel the same. I think social media is uh, taking a lot of time away from the gym. 
it's good. I'm telling you, there's no doubt. I, I, I have like my ups and downs with social media because it takes away, like it takes so much time and to do so much. And, you know, but, and some people go overboard, they buy into the shit so much, like, you know, people from that you don't even know, like, you know, can say shit and you see these guys like fucking arguing with them and stuff. I'm like, what? Dude, you don't even know who this person yeah, is. Yeah. Dude, this could be somebody literally trolling you. It could be somebody just an idiot. Like, I mean, you don't, you don't have any, you're never going to see this person. Right. Never going to talk to this person. <laughs> Why are you arguing with this person? Yeah. I, this- like, I, I'm, my kids are great at it because like they, they literally, you know, like, like Kim's probably the one that gets the most emotional about it. She's like, you shouldn't want to see anybody, you know, talk bad about anybody. And she gets, you know, so angry. She'll be like, this person said this. And then I'm yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to ignore these people. But my kids come from that video background where those motherfuckers are ruthless on video. <laughs> they are crazy. And so they're like, you know, right off the bat, like the first time Morgan started like building a following and there was like some negative stuff on them. I'm like, you got to just ignore that. He's like, oh, pff, I can care less. Yeah. I'm like, Are you sure it doesn't bother you. No, no. I think it's funny as hell. Yeah. I, like, yeah. Because you get you get used to it, you know, and yeah, eventually it doesn't even phase them. It doesn't even phase them. <laughs> so, all, talking about yeah. you talking about your kids. You got the strongest kids. I mean, how old is uh, Morgan is the older one, right? Dom. Dom's the older one. The Dominic is the older one. Morgan. How old is Morgan now? So Morgan's 15. He's 15 now. What does he bench press? So this is crazy. So he just (laughs) hit 405 for almost a double, which is the strongest. He's hit it before as a double, but he, so he got hurt playing football this year. So he, he was a freshman started middle linebacker at the varsity level. So he went literally from eighth grade to varsity. And then right, like literally two days before the second district game, he gets hurt in practice where he fractures his growth plate. And so he lit, so we were really cautious about that. Like we like, like and it's funny, like everybody's like, Oh, weightlifting can mess with your growth plates. And I'm like, man, I don't, you know, like impact sports are way worse on your growth plates. And then we end up fucking, you know, he ends up breaking a growth plate mm. playing football. So he took three months off, never touched a weight, didn't do shit, walked into the gym, after a three month break and bench pressed with, it was in a cast still with his leg up. So no leg drive, 365 for two. And then, so we still took a little bit of extra time off, literally walks in a gym and three weeks later, benches 405. That's a Crazy. 15 year old. This 15 is year old. This I, insane. This is unheard of. Yeah. I've never seen anything like I've seen it, like some amazing you know, like guys, kids that are strong. Like I've never seen anybody like that. If, yeah, is yeah. he is he stronger than Morgan, considering his age? More well, so Morgan's a young one, and he is. I mean, Dominic is he stronger yeah. than Dominic? I've never benched four or five ever. <laughs> That's the crazy. Most he ever did was three ninety. Is he getting that from you or from or from Kim? So Kim's father. So he's getting. Dead. <laughs> so you don't want to give the credit to Kim. <laughs> you give it. <laughs> no, she, no you genetic get... with Kim's a freak of nature. Like, yeah. like so Dom's physique, like, and I'll we'll, I'll tell you about that in a minute, but. The strength comes from the father because Kim said that there was like her father was a football coach all of his life. And she said there will be times when he wouldn't train for six months and like the guys would be like lifting in the gym, like in the football gym. And like he would literally just lay down without warming up and like hit 405 for like five, like just genetic raw. Yeah. Stuff. I remember last year, not 21, 2020 Olympia, you had Morgan with you. Morgan, yeah, yeah. And I remember we were training with Rami, and he trained with us, and I treated him the exact same. Yeah, yeah. And he was using the same weights. I was like, this is a 14-year-old boy. First of all, I couldn't even believe it, just the size of the statue of him. I mean, same with Dominic. I mean, Dominic, I remember, I remember Dominic running around in my room with the same, with the same long hair. Long hair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like and destroying shit. And then yeah. see him here, and, and at the last Olympia, I was like, damn, I don't even know. I said, am I that old? These yeah. guys grow up to be monsters, man. Unbelievable. Morgan, you know, and it's crazy. Morgan, you know, his whole goal is football. Everything is driven around football. So he trains a little bit different, but he's training, you know, with um, Dom, but he trains a little bit different. Everything's literally geared toward explosiveness and strength uh, for football. But Dom in the last eight months have, has kind of transitioned into bodybuilding. So he wants to compete. So that's what he wants to do now. Yes, he is 100% set. So basically from, you know, basically from the beginning of last year, he basically kind of started eating cleaner and stuff because he was done playing football, basically. And so he basically kind of, 
you know, transitioned into it just very gradual and his body just exploded. Now that's Kim. That's Kim's genetics. Yeah. I've watched him in the last probably six months just transition. So where so he now he's fifteen. How tall is he? No, so Dom's Dom's eighteen. No, no, no. I mean Morgan. Morgan? So Morgan's fifteen. He's five eleven. Five eleven. How how heavy is he now? So he's two right now he's probably two oh seven, two oh five to two oh seven. That's crazy. That's crazy. What, what I would I would like to go. I would like to see him in school, sitting in class with all the other other it's, students. It's, yeah. It, what's crazy is like because he played varsity ball, you know, and so you have all these seniors and and everybody, and like seeing him out there, and like in my brain it registers that he's a freshman, and yet he's literally just as big as everybody else. And maybe I mean there were some taller kids than him, obviously, but like physique wise, maturity level, everything. You know, way, it's crazy. Yeah. way ahead, way ahead. Awesome. Let's talk about the big men. Big Rami, big Rami contacts you. Was it, was it like early, tw late 2019 or mid 2019? Yeah, it was like July of 19. Yeah. July of 19 contacts you. How long did it take you to decide? Yes. It was, it was kind of funny because, um, so he, I had just seen that he was over here, right? He was guest posing for um, Jim, Victor, Victor Martinez. Oh, in New York. Yeah, yeah. So he comes over here and guest poses. I see him and I'm thinking like, like he looked like he was in decent shape, but he was kind of downsized a little bit. I'm like, I wonder what he is doing. So I, I send a message to Victor and I go, hey man, I go, what, what's Rami doing? Like, what's he doing? He goes, so he calls me back. He goes, hey, listen. Uh, we were just talking about you. We were just talking about you and like Rami wanted me to get a, get a hold of you. And I'm like, dude, I was just like, I hope we're thinking the same thing because I said, you know, I, you know, I was a big fan and I've said for years, like, you know, it's, it's almost brutal to watch him. Not, not hitting his peak. Yes, like not hit it. And uh, so I said, what's his game plan? He goes, right now, we don't know. Da, 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 da. I said in Victor, I was talking to Victor. And Victor's like, let me put you guys in contact. And, Let's, you know, see what happens. Um, so, you know, Rami calls me and we start talking and it was instantaneous. Like I knew, like I knew like within just seconds of talking to him about it, like the direction he wanted to go and what was, what he was doing and everything. Um, like, yeah, it was, it was done deal. Done deal. And, and I knew what, I knew where it could go fast too. Yeah. And well, it, and it, it didn't take you nothing but a year <laughs> for yeah. him, for him yeah. to basically come to the Olympia after he was there, you know, he was there. Yeah. He was already you said, you know what I mean? I mean, I mean you got the first show you guys see was the Arnold in Columbus Arnold. 20, 20, 2020. 2020. And, yeah. and I mean we you know, we messed that one up. I messed yeah. that one up. You know, I mean I'll take you know responsibility for that. But I mean the prep was we had most all of the questions answered going into that prep. Yeah. So we, we knew everything that we needed to know. We learned everything we needed to know. And you um, told him, and you told him, he said, after this show, I said, you'll never lose another show. I, I said that. Yeah, I told him. Yeah. 100%. I said, listen, I said, I'm going to tell you right now. I said, we have all the questions answered. I said, I've seen everything that I need to see. I know exactly how your body responds. You're never going to lose another show. I said, no chance. <laughs> and I was 100% convinced in my head that is never going to happen. Fast forward, 2020 Olympia, he gets an, an, a special invite. Yeah. Thank God. Yeah. Comes in at his all-time best, wins the Olympia. Nobody expected it. Nobody saw him coming. Nothing. It wasn't and, even, dude, I was watching, like, all the, you know, all the YouTubers and the, the fitness guru, internet guys, yeah. or whatever. He wasn't on anybody's top five. No, he, he wasn't. No he, one. He wasn't. <laughs> he wasn't. So, and the whole time I'm looking at pictures going, <laughs> how when did you think during the prep when did you think during the prep this looks like this we can do this this year i mean at about six weeks out i thought if everything progresses um we're going to be in business and then about a week after he got to your house i knew like man if for somebody to beat him they're gonna have to be whew, they're gonna have to be on the money yeah like, I, because i knew everything that he had you know, I knew everything he had. Like, I just didn't see. And, I mean, he matched up with everybody. But, like, when he turned to the side, mm -hmm. I was like, it's game over. <laughs> yeah. it's over. 
So, you know? so how was it? What, what was it like? Because I know you sat in this. You had your seat, you know, and you know, you know, you see him in the room. You see him all the time. You know exactly. But there's still this little bit of thing. Is that how is it going to transition to the stage? How, exactly. How is he going to look under the lights? So, how is he going to so when he came out the first on Friday night, 2020, for his mandatories. When did you exhale in your seat saying, all right, we good? Yeah, so I, I looked at everybody, right? Watched everybody walk out, and of course, Phil's in the show, and I, I think, okay, Phil looks pretty good. We're good. Like when he first came out. Yeah. I got, okay, okay, Brandon, okay, okay. Um, you know, Hottie, same thing, same thing. And, and then when he came out and he was like doing his turns, and I'm like, I was over to the side just a little bit, and I'm like, Oh shit. Oh shit. And then he went back and came back and ended on that side shot. And I go, mm, it's over. I go, <laughs> I, go, it's over. Yeah. I said, if this is like, if everything's <laughs> good, it's over with. It's over with. And then of course, then, you know, of course, several other guys faded and, and he literally like Rami. And I mean, you know, this like looked like a statue. Mm. It didn't matter if it was in the lineup when he was hitting poses like he was first one in, last one out, in his stance the whole time, it stood out like a sore thumb. Like I mean, it, it, was it, a, it looked like everything came back, came together at the perfect uh, time. It couldn't, have, it couldn't have been any better at that time. Yeah. I mean, I think it was the best, the best he could be. Now, of course, after the Olympia win, you know, the, the goal is now next year it's going to be even better. And, and the uh, second one is tough. The second one is tough too. The second one is tougher, yeah, I, I think so too, because there's more pressure, and but you know now most people there's do identified. most people there's do there's know there. they do know it now, but there still be it might be a few that don't that, that doesn't know that after that Olympia 2020 in December he didn't really train for how long? So we first got back to legitimately training in July. July. Now we're talking three months before the Olympia three months yeah you know now, you know and when i say that everybody's like well he had to go train you know there was probably and i'm gonna say eight maybe nine times that you know he would go one day and he'd be like i'm yep. gonna get it done yep. and it wasn't there yeah. and you know three weeks later he goes back to the gym one day and it's just not there yeah. like he, he's just you know, he's going through some personal things and he's got, you know, the, all of the pressure of the Olympia, like all of this shit is starting to snowball. And I mean, you know, of course, yeah. and, and a, lot of, a lot of people do, but he, like Rami is this very passionate, like individual, like it, it all has to be like, just kind of perfect mm -hmm. and like perfect harmony. You know what I mean? And that was just interrupted completely going in. So he's trying to wrap his head around everybody. And then of course, like, Look, he's a megastar in Egypt now. So he's got everybody pulling him 15 different directions. And he realizes how much pressure is, you know, at this. And there was a point where, you know, I like I kept kind of leading into it. I'm like, we got to go. We just, we gotta, like, we're running out of time. I said, the one thing that we can't get back is time. And I said, right now, I said, you're, you're good. If we get you in the gym and train, da, 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 da. And there was, a, there was probably two points that we went through that. It started probably in June. And then we got to July, and I go, Rami, we're we're out of time, like we are out of time. Where where did you did you tell yourself, listen, that you're going to get started, and did you say, okay, I'm going to see what happens in the next four weeks, and then decide if it's worth yes. it or not? Hundred percent. Like here's the what I you know I I told him I said, I said here's my thinking. I go, dude, we're at a we're in a situation where we did not want to be, and I said I don't know if we got enough time to get there, and I said the one thing that I can't reproduce. You diet down, train hard, and supplement smart for months. When the time comes to step on stage, don't leave your tan to chance. Go with the pros. Pro Tan. Number one worldwide since 1987 and the official sponsor of the Olympia for the last 15 years. Don't step on stage without it. Pro Tan. It's time in the gym. And so now we're trying to create something with the body that's not actually there. We're trying to create this dense kind of hardness to the muscle that actually takes time underweight, right? Um, and 
it's it's something that's different that you know you have to really kind of take things to a different level and so i even told him i said listen i said this diet's actually gonna be worse than last year's diet (laughs) because we're gonna have to get someplace earlier to end up with that harder look that we are now chasing Mm -hmm. and i said it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be harder it's gonna be worse and i said you know and then and he even told me he said listen if we get to a point and you don't think I can win, if you don't think in your heart I can win, tell me. I want to know. I, I'm not going here to lose. And uh, I said, listen, I'm going to be 100% honest with you. I said, we're running out of time. We got to get it done. We got to get it done. And then that was when, and you'll know this, like I called you and I go, we got to get him to your house. Like, we now are in a situation <laughs> that if we just keep spinning, like we're getting to a good place. Now we got to take it to that next level. And I said, we got to get him to your house. I said, whatever, whatever we, it takes to get there. And I, you know, like I called you and then I immediately called, um, you know, Rami. And I said, I said, listen, you got to go now. I said, mm-hmm. I don't know what you have in store, um, but you got to go. And then I think he had a, he had a, uh, some kind of commercial that had been, like booked in advance or something that he had to film. And I said, listen, the day after that, you got to get on a plane. You got to get to Dennis. Like, like we're going to run out of time. We yeah. got to get there and get it done. And then luckily, luckily we were able to get it done. Yeah. We pulled it, there. Pull, you pulled it off. You pulled it off. It was, it was, it was close on Friday. Yeah. I thought Friday, I thought he was, I thought it was close. I mean, it was, you know, there were some guys good on Friday, but I did I thought he clearly won on Friday. Saturday is when I thought it was close. Like you thought, thought it was close on Saturday. Yes, I, I thought that he was improved, but I thought Hottie had improved. Oh, it was too, right? And so it was a little bit closer between you know different guys and stuff. Yeah, like I didn't think that you know I mean Hottie had already been you know was out of the running on Friday. In reality, he got kind of saved on Friday because he could have been really low on Friday, in my opinion. But then on Saturday he looked phenomenal. So I knew that there was already enough distance that yeah. we weren't at risk, right? But I thought that was the closest battle that had uh, ended up all weekend. Yeah, but you know what's funny, though? And I, I think we talked about this. When Friday night, it looked to me like they had Hardy out, out of the top four or five. I, I think that they, I think he was legitimately out of the top four or five, but I think they saved him. I, I know, what, but, how, think, but what, what saved him, though? I, well, I think the judges did. I think the judges were kind of like, listen, we're just going to, we're going to kind of give him the benefit of the doubt. It's close enough that we can kind of keep him in there. And if on Saturday night he comes in and looks like this again, we can, we can put him right. We can yeah. put him right. I'm, I'm just going off the, off the scorecards because the scorecards had him in straight third, third place on Friday. Yeah. Support, yeah, yeah. Just the call outs didn't yeah. really, but yeah, I mean, didn't look like it. Next to, like and i'm a big hottie fan so you know don't take anything from this but like when you stood him next to like hunter labrata like no way yeah like I'm telling you like he was flat he was very small from the side um you know he had certain he hottie always has really good you know muscle that pops in certain you know certain areas but standing even next to walker like walker's so thick you know from front to back and mm. you know He's just like so dominant in certain shots. It's like I just didn't see how any way, you know, he they he was gonna, you know, match those guys, you know. Yeah. But I think just kind of was like, okay, we're gonna save him, you know, a little bit. And uh because I think if they wouldn't have, then he would have been like too far down to be moved into a position. And I think where he plays, you know, he deserved. Like, you know, I think he was right in there. Yeah. I think it was close between him and Brandon, you know. So R- Rami winning his second Olympia, I mean I mean, all of us swear. <laughs> it was like, it's like I, I dropped a stone out of my drawers, yeah. you know? I don't like it to be that close. Like, I don't like it to be like, yeah. I want to get her control of everything and have everything just come down. But most of the time, it doesn't yeah. work out like that. You know what I mean? And so um, it was one of those things where we had to push and push and push to get there. And then we had to just keep pushing the whole weekend and, and we got it done. You know what? We got it done. Yeah. But I rem- the good thing is, it sets us up for a really, really good situation. It's it's kind of like two thousand two and two thousand three, Ronnie. Yes. Yes. Because when you when you compare when you compare uh, Rami twenty twenty to twenty one, what do you say? So I, I mean, what I see is he's downsized just a little bit, but it's mainly again because he lacks time in the gym, mm-hmm. so he doesn't have that like 
dense look to the muscle. The muscle's not like pushing super, super hard. Um, even though his conditioning was great, you know what I mean? It was that intricate little stuff that I saw. Downsized a little bit, you know, through the tricep, downsized a little bit, you know, through the pecs a little bit, through the upper pec a little bit in, in certain shots. Um, but overall, like what I see is just that denseness to the muscle. Like that's what we need. That's the look that will carry him. Yeah. Fucking out of the out of yeah. the you know, league of everybody. I, I basically told him the same thing because uh, right after the Olympia, when we were on the way back, I said, "Listen, you can never do this again." Yeah. I told him straight up. I said, "If you come to see, if you come looking like this next year, I said you're not going to win it." Well, there's guys chasing. Yes, right? I said you can't. Away with it. You got. I said. But best case scenario happened because you won, even though he were he wasn't at his best. Right, right, right. So next year, I said you can't, you can't not train. And I gotta say, he's been training since day after the fucking the Olympia. He has not stopped training yet. And this, here's the good thing. I mean, what we did was we set up a game plan to basically use this time to continue to train, to maintain, and just keep pushing that body back to kind of where we need it to be. Mm -hmm. but at the same time, get healthy. Make sure the body cleanses, detox, and get all of his, you know, numbers back on his blood work. Get him to a point where his body is ready to go for the rest of the year. Right. And um, and that's where he's at right now. So what, he's in a really good spot right now. He's in a really good spot. Yes, yes. And and so what's the uh, what's the what's the game plan? What is your game plan for Rami this year? So here's the game plan, and I've said this the whole time, and and you know people are like, oh, Rami doesn't need to be any bigger. But Rami could be bigger. I'm telling you. Um, I'm glad you're saying it right now because yeah. people don't, people don't, yeah. hold on one second, one second, one second. Don't forget what you want to say because <laughs> people don't know that Rami was at his lightest ever this yeah. last year. Yeah. People don't know. They don't even know the number. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Chad. Go ahead. You know, but here's the thing. So most people, you know, because he had been so big in the past, you know, coming in at 310 pounds and all this shit, they, they're so afraid of that that they're like, he can't be big because they think that if he gets to 310 pounds, that's how he's going to look. But that isn't the way he's going to look. Right. And, you know, because our game plan hasn't changed. Like our game plan is still conditioning. But at the same time, you take an entire year of training, which he probably hasn't had for numerous years now, mm -hmm. like a legitimate year dedicated to bodybuilding, pushing as hard as he with everything timed perfect, there's no telling what he's capable of. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we're looking at for sure 25% better Yeah. from last year. Yeah. From last year to this year, 25% easy. Yeah. Easy. I, 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 you know, I totally agree. Cause I think that, you know, if he comes in a little bigger, those areas that he kind of lost a little bit will fill out again. hundred percent. You know, and I believe with this time that he's been training and with the time that he has until December, I think we will see a 300-pound shredded Rami on stage. I do, too. Because, you know, I mean, we were very close at the Arnold in 2020. Right. We were about we – were, we were under 300, but we were just under 300. And then, you know, my brain says, like, hey, listen, you know, based off of how he looks and everything – like you've got, this has got to be the karma process because I mean, he's so big, right. But his body utilizes is so efficient. Like it's just a different, different process, but he was already right there. Like, you know I mean? He was already right there. So there's no doubt that there's the potential to be three, you know, 300 to 304, somewhere in that ballpark in better shape than he's been in the last two years. Yeah. Because the little bit bigger fullness with him pushes against that muscle, deepens up everything um, to a almost exaggerated look. And uh, I, I think that that's, you know, plus, you know, time in the gym that gives us that, you know, dense, you know, maturity to that muscle for an extended period of time that again, like can't be reproduced any yeah. other way. The, 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 the goal is for me to go to Dubai to train with him. Yeah, that would yeah. be, I think, I mean, if we, you know, if, if that works out for you guys, you know, several times, you know, throughout this year, yeah, that would be key. That's the goal. The goal, Matt, for me, would be perfect 
not to stay there for three months, you know, because that's a long time, but to go for a month, month on, month off, and just come back for another month. Okay, that's enough because they got Ramadan coming up in April. There's not much. There's not much happening there anyway. So, but we'll definitely want to get the workouts in because he, he trains. Really he trains game, better when he gets pushed. Hundred percent. And that's one of the game plans right now is like this first phase basically runs through Ramadan. And so we're going to grind, basically bring his weight up, get it into a certain point. Then we're going to use Ramadan to basically kind of then kind of refine back a little bit. We're going to basically harden up that muscle, use all of that time because he can only eat during a certain period of time. So we're going to try to you know, make sure that insulin sensitivity is at an all time high coming out of Ramadan, those types of things. And then we'll go into phase two right after Ramadan, which, you know, starts May 2nd. So May 3rd, we're going to come out of the gate, boom, you know, running right into it. And again, like we have, we get a couple extra months um, for this, this Olympia prep since it's in December, like the outcome um, on paper is crazy. Yeah. Crazy. I, I kind of feel the same way. I feel, I feel the I same way. You. But I told him, I said, listen, this could be your 2003 Ronnie year. I, this could be a year. <laughs> like I said, we can't just win. Like if you go in and win, then you're just another Mr. Olympia, yeah. you know, setting up a string of, of you know, Olympia wins. I go, you got to go in and climb atop another mountain. Yeah. That's what you got to do. You got to you got to distance yourself from the pack. And I said, you literally, everything is in front of you right now. You're in the driver's seat to do that. Yeah. All you got to do is drive. I told him the exact same thing. I said, when you come out Friday night, just by walking out, people got to say, this is all, it's over. Over. Yeah. over. Yeah. That's the key, man. Yeah. And you, and you know how that is. Like, that's the best feeling in the world. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, I mean, yeah. back in the day, I mean, I, I mean, obviously, you know, people don't want to see this, but back in the day, the key was to get one call out. That was the, that was the goal. Like you get called out in the center, quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn, back in line. Yeah. Done. Yeah. <laughs> Done. Yeah. We don't see you no more. No. You walk off stage like game over. Now, obviously, judging's changed a lot, and you know they want to see the comparisons for the fans and and all that kind of stuff. But you still want that type of feeling, like yeah. lights out. In your mind, in your mind, who's the biggest threat to Rami? You know. Uh, I mean, I don't necessarily think that there's a guy that's that is a threat to Rami that's competing right now. When he's like, on. Yeah. 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 If like based off of him, like his biggest threat is him. Like if something happens and he isn't able to do what he's able needs to do, then he basically opens the door for everybody else to step just a little closer. Right. And then it becomes close. But Rami in a hundred percent work mode. I don't think anybody, I don't think anybody is close right now. Now, I mean, that's not taking anything away. We got some guys, you know, we got Hottie, we got Labrada, we got, you know, Nick Walker, you know, I mean, Brandon Curry's still in the mix, you know, for right now. I mean, those guys are all good, you know, th you know, at least two of those guys are young, hungry, yeah. you know, athletes that are now at the top trying to move forward. So, you, you know, you got to keep an eye on those guys. But, I mean, there's some guys, you know, that's coming up that are, like freaks of nature and those are the guys that you want to see you know the, um, you know guys like uh, like andrew jacked like you know i mean you know those are amateur guys that's you know more than likely going to turn pro i mean that, you know that, that's a six two you know guy who looks like he's literally at the beginning stages of you know just what he's possible of wouldn't he be someone that would be a perfect fit for you too oh my god dude i look at him and, and you can just tell like <laughs> He's gotten to where he is by damn near accident. Yeah. Like he trained with Larry wheels and all that heavy weight, like all of this process he's got there, but he's still at the beginning stages of tapping into what he has. Of his real potential. Like, yeah. Like he doesn't, I don't think he understands like what he has, yeah. but I think, I'm not, I'm not saying it's him, but I mean, he's got the potential to do like to be a freak because he's six foot two. And, he, and it looks like he filled out his frame. Yeah. So he, he like doesn't... if you fill that frame out at six two, that's a hard comp. Like we haven't seen really that much. Paul Dillette was the last one. Dillette, yeah, yeah. I mean, those guys. Like I think that's like we're gonna see a tall guy like that. That's the next freak. Yeah, in my opinion. You know. So Andrew, if you listen, if you listen to this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give us a call. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
All right, so let me ask you just one more thing before I let you go, because I know you'll probably got some other stuff to do. You just mentioned the newer guys. Nick Walker, you see this guy just weighing 300 pounds in crazy shape? Crazy. Yeah, I mean, and I'm telling you, like, here's the thing. Like, like we were talking about earlier, this is a guy that everything he does is a calculated move for bodybuilding. Yeah. Everything he does. Um, those are things that we haven't seen, you know. And, you know, I mean, granted, he's short and he filled out very rapidly and quick. But at, at the same time, like, you just – even even the shorter guys, you know, because everybody kind of says, like, oh, well, he's short. Of course he's this, da, da, da. But even shorter guys, you don't see fill out their complete skeletal structure. Um, he, like, he's – He's in the like range of filling out completely. Yeah, like his. I mean, three hundred pounds, and, and his front to back thickness is silly. Yes, like, it's silly looking. You know what I mean? And he, um, he. I like the way he trains. Like he trains very like controlled. Like, yeah, control heavy, but still like controlled. You can tell that connection is to the mu- like is just locked in. Yeah. He can, individualize each muscle group he can make the best out of it you know during each training session without like overdoing shit like mm-hmm. he's locked in yeah but the thing i like about him is he I, I like him because he is what he is he's not trying to act like you know some genius or some you know this guy or some expert trainer or whatever just kind of does his thing but he's locked in and, yeah. and i like the group that new group that's like that labrada i think is the same way looks so ridiculous I, now too but, He's in phenomenal shape all the goddamn time. Yeah. This kid is never out of shape. Um, he's gradually, you know, moving. I mean, you know, obviously his father is a phenomenal champion who's, you know, overwatching everything that he does, uh, is, you know, seeing everything he does and, and kind of, you know, grooming him along, um, making sure he does everything the right way. And, and I mean, he's another one that just looks ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. I think this uh, Nick and, and Hunter both are going to move up even even more next year. I think that they are the future. You know, there are two guys that's going to be battling for a long time. Yeah. Um, you know, and I mean, I think they both, they're both unique, you know, in their own way. Um, but both very, very likable guys. Very, you know, very right. much like, good for the sport. Yeah. Very good for the sport. All right. Yeah. To finish this, this podcast, brother, give me your top five at the Arnold coming up in March. Oh, shit. The I, Arnold. I know. I have to put you on a, I have to put you on a spot. You know the li- you know the lineup, right? Um, I don't have it exactly. Right. Okay, I'll give you I'll give you a couple of names: Brandon Curry, William Bonac, Justin Rodriguez, Brett Wilkin, Steve Kuklo, um, Max Charles. Um, so here's what I think. I mean, I'm trying to think if there's some. Is there? I know Cedric's in there. Cedric's in it. Yep. Um, some others, but so I think Curry's going to win this. I've always thought that Curry's going to win this. Mm-hmm. I think that just at the level that he's at right now, based off of, you know, where everybody else is at, if he shows up anywhere close, I don't think anybody beats him. But I think after that, I think it becomes interesting because you've got some new guys. I think Kuklo, if he nails it, I think is in the mix. But I think um, Wilkins is a guy that has come up and, you know, there's he's got a lot of hype right now. He still has a lot to prove. Mm -hmm. you know for me to believe it but he's in there like Mm -hmm. he's in the mix like we can't say he's he's like over the hump yet because you know when he competed last time i thought structurally he's solid he's good his conditioning is good he's another kid that again very regimented very on point with bodybuilding is moving up is doing everything the right way um he could be a problem like if he is in shape if he's added, let's say, 10 pounds of tissue onto that frame from last year, um, he could be a big problem. Big what, problem. what about William? So I think William's going to fall in this lineup. I think that he is going to be undersized a little bit. I think that the, the things that he has lacked over the last couple of years is finally starting to catch up with him. I think that he was downsized a little bit this year, um, and his conditioning was also behind a little bit this year he has had very last year last year last year last year yes i keep saying this year we're in 2022 (laughs) last year but i think he's had very little time to correct that um and so based off of the pictures that i'm seeing right now and i mean he is again i've seen him transition very fastly you can't really count him out 
but he's not impressing me right now compared to maybe where some of these other guys are. Yeah, that's strange. I thought I, he, I, I don't know why, but he impressed me. I, I just literally filmed the podcast before you with him. Oh, and you like him? Yeah, and he told yeah. and he told. I asked him. I said, "Cause I mean, I saw you know the double biceps. It was full thick." I seen. I mean, I seen a shot t- with hands together where you could see his core, and I thought his like he looked soft for it, for where like he normally is. Uh, I, I don't know. I I, I think for, I for back shot, that right? that was nine weeks out though. Yeah, yeah. The back shot I saw where he looked thick, but it's a weird angle, yeah. so he looks kind of bunchy in the so- angle. Anyways, I just talked to him and he told me, I said, listen, this is uh, for him. He changed some things. Yeah. You know, he will announce that. And um, he's up in weight where he usually is, four kilos up, which is about 10 pounds from where he normally is at this point. At this point. And he says that his legs could finally, he's able to train his quads the way he really wanted to. That was the big, so that was my biggest thinking. Because I haven't seen his legs. They're covered up, which yeah. usually is the telltale nah. that they're not he, bigger, right? He literally but, just told me that his quads got so big that he has to consider to stop training him in a little bit because he thinks he's a little out of proportion. Out of balance? Yeah. I said, your quads didn't came up that much? He said, yeah, yeah. We'll see. I said, like, f- I mean, I think, I mean, obviously, if he's in shape and big, I mean, he could be branded. Yeah. Like, no. I mean, if he's if he's that big, you know what I mean? Um, because obviously, you know, Brandon's got some weaknesses that he isn't going to correct, you know. Right. So, I mean, he's not going to correct the legs. He's going to, you know, we know that they're going to have to bring him in full to where the like those legs stay a little bit fuller. But they're so he's going to lack a little bit of conditioning from that point. Um, so, so do you think that's the strategy for the Arnold for him, knowing I, that there's a new guy I, like Brett Wilkins that will probably come in super peeled come in big. i think he's going to come in big but as like as hard as he possibly can mm-hmm. staying big you know what i mean yeah and um you know probably i mean the best brand it's looked was probably the year he won the arnold in my opinion 2019 that was, yeah, that was probably the best he's looked if he can come back to something like that he'll be hard to beat yeah but if wilkins you know wilkins has structure he has decent size i mean granted he's still got to come up a little bit but i mean he had decent size last year. You know he's bigger this year based off of how he looks right now. Um, he was in shape last year, so you got to give him the benefit of the doubt that he's going to be in shape. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, he could be a problem. Like he, I mean, he matches Brandon structurally. Um, you know, obviously Brandon's got that freaky back and that width and you know that shoulder to waist ratio. Um, but Wilkins isn't far off of that, mm-hmm. like he, and I think he might be bigger. So I don't know. Like, well, it's we'll, gonna be interesting. we'll see. We'll see. I mean, it's going to be exciting. Bro, you're going to be in Columbus, right? I'm not. You're I not? can't travel. I can't actually travel. I, like, because of the, I mean, uh, the, everything that I've been going through this year with the. So, but not, but you're good now? Everything's good? Good. The infection's gone. So I'm done with the infection. Um, but the damage that it created to my spine, I'd have some stuff. That's why I had some stuff put into my spine. So I can't, and I had this, this has been, this has been about a month ago, but I can't fly um, for actually almost another seven weeks. So. so you're still in pain? I'm in tremendous pain. Yeah. Ouch, still. So basically, that's the biggest issue right now. So basically the infection that was encapsulated on my spine eroded basically all the nerves and everything. So basically it was like, basically like stripped, you know, the coating of a wire off your nerves. So now my, my nerves just misfire. Oh, all wow. the time and shit. So they, I put some, they got stuff put into my spine, which they're, uh, which is more, I'm actually one of a hundred that's had it done. Um, and it's basically like a smart shot that's supposed to reconnect and rejuvenate the uh, nerve connections of the spine. And um, so we'll see how that, um, how that works. That so, shit sounds painful, man. Bro, so rest up, heal up, because you know we need you, brother. We're, we're going to have a good year, man. Uh, all right, my man. Listen, give my love to the family, man. Thank you for coming on, brother. I appreciate you. Take care, my man. Hey, man listen, I got to tell you. I got to tell you one thing. Before. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. It, like, <laughs> at least once or twice uh, a week, my my oldest son, Dominic. So, he, like I said, he's doing bodybuilding and stuff now, and he's getting big. But he comes in, and he watches your Q&A. On, <laughs> tell him I want to bring him on one time. <laughs> Dude, he he's afraid that you're gonna do. It. He's like, you don't think he would bring me on? Cause I don't want to go on there. I don't want to watch me. But he's like, you're not gonna believe this guy that was on Dennis's podcast. Like, 
this dude took his shirt off and Dennis was like telling him to, like no put your shirt back <laughs> You need like like every, like twice a week, like yeah, I do it usually Wednesdays and and Sundays. I'll do a, I do a, I used to be when Corona hit, when Corona, when everything was locked down, I was on there almost every day. I was I was having a ball with those guys, you know. Some of the guys, are, you know, it it is fun. It's fun. Tell the boys I said what's up, my man. Okay, oh, man, all right, take care, chat. Be safe. Bye bye.